Hi, this is Energizing the Seated. My name is Avi, uh, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure everybody uh, has the opportunity to make themselves comfortable. Uh, that can mean not sitting down. We've been in this conference center for two days. Uh, you've been sitting for a large part of that. Uh, I welcome you to stand, put your feet up, uh, sit on the floor, do whatever you want to do, because uh, that's what this is all about. So the unfortunate reality of our jobs, despite being really wonderful, uh, it's basically our job to not move for 40 hours a week. Um, so whether we have a billable target that we're trying to hit, uh, we're trying to get a project out the door, or we're just really, really invested in trying to contribute to core, um, we're still bound by our keyboard and our mouse and our screens. Um, maybe in a few years that'll change, but uh, at this point, our job is to sit with our hands in one place and our eyes in another and just not move. Um, so the reality of it is, it's, it's slowly eating away at us. Um, like Nux's mates, Larry and Barry, in <laughs> Mad Max. Um, they say that sitting is the new smoking. Uh, sitting and sedentary lifestyle is, is a, a really, is not the way that humans were made to exist. Uh, and so what I'm gonna try and do today is, is help you figure out how you can move beyond uh, that lifestyle and still do the work that you need to do. So, if you can't fix what's broken, you'll go insane. Uh, your, your body is not meant to do this, and if you try and push your body to do something that it's spent tens of thousands of years figuring out how to do, or how to not do, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to work for you. So, our goal is to make life not mediocre. Uh, so, a little bit about my history in this. Um, I've been using a standing desk for about four years, uh, a little more than that. Uh, I've seen every incarnation. Uh, when I first got into standing desks, uh, I was at an office at the University of Chicago that was really wonderful. Uh, we were moving into a new space and had the opportunity to buy some new furniture, and we got this really great electronic desk. We picked out some really cool chairs that have some amazing different functionality, and you can sit in them in all kinds of cool ways. Uh, I moved to another office where we had cubes, and I didn't have the opportunity to totally change my entire space. Um, I started with some books and an iMac box and a bunch more books and some random stuff I scavenged around, and I built a standing desk, and it worked really, really well. Uh, I eventually upgraded to a Vera desk, which is one of the cool uh, desktop uh, desks that moves up and down. Um, at home, uh, I work from home now, and I've got a IKEA standing desk that's kind of crank operated. Uh, it's pretty cheap, really reasonable, uh, pretty small, and I've got a bunch of boxes and other various uh, pieces that I use to get everything to the right elevation. Um, there are a lot of resources online about ergonomics, about standing desks, about how to uh, set up your workspace properly. If you would like me to connect you with any of those, uh, I'm, I'm happy to offline. But this talk is, is not that talk. So, uh, great. We know standing desks are good, uh, and it's a lovely day. But hold on. There's now all kinds of new research. Standing desks are horrible. Standing desks are overrated. Uh, is your standing desk doing you more harm than good? What's going on? We all thought standing desks were going to cure everything. And now people are saying that they're, they're not the green place that we were promised. So standing desks aren't the solution. Standing is not the solution. Moving is the solution. Standing desks facilitate movement. And that's what we need to keep our bodies healthy and active. Standing desks lower the barrier to entry to movement. When you're standing, it's easier to move back and forth. You can fidget. You can shift your weight. You can put your foot up. Uh, it's, it's so much easier to do these micro movements that help keep our bodies tuned when you're standing. So uh, the, the goal, like I said, of a standing desk is to create a movement-rich environment. Um, these are just 
keeping anything around you and, and providing little triggers for yourself so that you're moving more often. Um, one of my first tips for a movement-rich environment uh, is drinking water. Everybody talks about how drinking water is, is really great. You need to have a certain amount uh, to keep your body going every day. It's healthy, blah, blah, blah. Um, the other secret about drinking water makes you have to go to the bathroom. The more you drink water, the more you have to stand up. Water helps you move. Uh, the next thing that I've seen around, uh, this is called a fidget bar. So it's a little, uh, a little suspended bar that you put on your desk. And you can put a foot up on it uh, and move your foot back and forth. Um, this is just another thing. Uh, they're, they're the little hemispherical balls. Uh, you can even guess it's just get like a little softball or a tennis ball. Anything that you can put around your desk to give you your foot something to do uh, and a different position to be in is a great way to help you move. Uh, another technique uh, is, is some kind of timer. There, there are lots of different ways. This is a Pomodoro timer. Um, that's the system where you take a short break every 25 minutes, a, long, a longer break every four 25 minute blocks. Um, any, any way that you can motivate yourself to break out of that great flow that you might have be having uh, every once in a while so that you can move. Um, stepping away from your work and, and allowing your, your mind some time to think can also just be a great way of continuing the thought process and breaking uh, out of um, you know, a slump that you might be in. So uh, I, what, I've, what, I've, what I've read recommends taking a two minute break every 20 to 30 minutes just to keep your body moving um, and, and trying to be in a different position at your desk when you come back. Uh, and I'll, we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Uh, as we move forward, I'm going to, so, so in the next section of the talk, I'm going to help you um, practice some ways that you can move and use those couple minutes um, to, to keep yourself healthier. So now I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. So we are going to do some exercises. Hopefully it's not as hard for you as it is for Max. Uh, uh, as we move into this, uh, I just want to say this is totally working at your own pace. Uh, everybody has different physical abilities, and that's totally okay. Uh, I'm going to talk you through some things that you can do at your desk, um, but if you're, if you're mobility limited anyway, um, feel free to do what works for you. Um, so the first thing that we... Um, that we need to do as we're moving uh, is, is learn to stand. Um, you might think this is a thing that should come naturally, uh, but uh, keeping a good posture is something that's really hard for a lot of people and something that we've unlearned um, in our time. Uh, in the book that I reference, that I, that I use uh, called Deskbound, uh, Kelly Starrett talks through how kids unlearn how to stand and uh, walk uh, really as soon as they start school. Um, so in preschool, first grade, kids go from a play-based environment to sitting at a desk for uh, four to eight hours a day. And, and sitting at a desk um, means you're, you're going from a, a, a very mobile and active environment to, to really just not moving. Uh, that has implications across the board, from posture to running, the walking technique, um, even more. So, as we stand here, um, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to keep our head back and neutral. So you want to make sure your head is aligned kind of right above your shoulder blades. Um, you want to keep your shoulders back. So you can, you can kind of push your shoulders back a little bit and then let them relax. And you should, you should feel that they're, they're leaning, they're, they're kind of sitting um, a little further back. We tend to slump forward a lot. Um, you want to keep your rib cage down, so not puffed up, but not slouched. You want to you want to um, just kind of keep your rib cage solid. Uh, so we want our abs engaged. So your core is essential to standing well. 
So as you breathe, you want to feel in your belly um, that your, your, your core is, is working for you. Um, you want to use your butt. Um, so you, if, you, if you kind of squeeze your butt, you can feel your pelvis kind of shifting. And you want to make sure that your pelvis is in the right position, uh, in a neutral position as you're, as you're standing. Um, and finally, you want to keep your feet straight and solid on the ground. So a lot of us tend to turn our feet out, or sometimes turn our feet in. Uh, either way, that, that um, puts us out of alignment. So you want to keep your feet relatively straight and make sure you're really kind of connected to the ground. So one of the things that I've done is just kind of stomping your feet a little bit and feeling how they feel after, they're, uh, after you kind of push them more solidly into the ground. So we've got our, we'll go through again. Uh, we've got our head back in neutral. We've got our shoulders back. We've got our rib cage down. We've got our abs engaged. We've got our butt flexed. We've got our feet straight. So we're standing. We're standing in a good neutral position. The next thing we need to do is breathe. Um, this, again, this might seem like something that should come naturally, but uh, we, we tend to get into patterns of breathing that are either too shallow uh, or, or not long enough. And so it's really, uh, it, it's really about creating a, a more kind of intentional feedback um, with our breathing. So if you've ever uh, played a wind instrument, play trumpet or saxophone or any, any wind instrument, uh, you know about breathing from your diaphragm. Um, so that's breathing, breathing from your lungs is where you're really puffing out your chest and, and breathing, breathing into your chest. Um, when you breathe from your diaphragm, it's a much more full breath uh, and it really helps to energize your entire body. Um, so what we're gonna do, this, uh, this exercise, um, the diagram is, is, uh, is uh, practice for lying on the ground. Uh, you can do this lying on the ground, but you can also just do it standing up. Um, one of the, the, the things that I've, that I've heard, um, if, you, if you put one hand at the bottom of your rib cage and the other kind of at your belt line, this is, this is the kind of core of your, your torso where you want to be breathing from. That's what should be moving when, when you're doing your breathing. So you can kind of take your hands and, and put them over your belly button. And we're going to breathe in through your nose and kind of feel your belly expand. Um, and then we're going to breathe out through our mouth and breathe, breathe kind of into your belly. So breathe in and then out. And in and then out. And as you're taking a break from your day, just standing and doing some long breaths, that can really help to energize you uh, and, and get your body flowing and your blood flowing and, and just you know, bring some more clarity to your head. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice exercise. Uh, I've got a, another series of exercises. Um, this is really a head to toe stretching routine. Um, I, I go to a personal trainer a couple days a week and, uh, and, and he's helped me work through this. Um, as a thing that you can do uh, in total or in pieces. You can take any one of these exercises and do it uh, just for a quick minute or two uh, by the side of your desk. So the first thing we're gonna do is our neck. Um, so we're gonna roll our neck from side to side, or sorry, we're gonna turn our neck from side to side. Um, we're gonna look up and look down and just kind of do some circles and look back and forth all of these things, as you're doing them uh, by yourself, you can you know, take a number, four, eight, and just do that many cycles of each. Um, so a couple back and forths, a couple rounds. You don't want to bend your neck back too much. That can actually hurt your spine. Um, so try to just keep it to the side, up and down. So next, we're going to work our shoulders. And so we're just going to do some circles. So you take your shoulders and just roll in a circle from the front to the back. And we're going to do that a few times. And then reverse it 
and go forward. So back to front. You can hang your arms, let everything else kind of be in a neutral position. Okay. Now we're going to work on our elbows. So this is a fun exercise. Um, you put your hands up like you've got some big funhouse glasses on, photo shoot like you're, you're in the circus. We're going to take our, our glasses off. So you're going to rotate your elbows. Keep your arms, your, your shoulders steady. And just rotate through your elbows to kind of take your sunglasses off. And then again, reverse it, put those glasses on. Yeah, as you, as you feel these things working out, feel free to kind of take a break, shake out any, uh, any pieces that, uh, that might feel uncomfortable. Next up, we're gonna work our wrists. So you just take your hands, uh, and interlace your fingers and just roll your wrists around. Start one direction, go around for a little while. As you do this, make sure you're still breathing, <coughs> focusing on your breath, keeping it nice and slow. Rotate the other way. If you are a watch, a lot of the time too, it can interfere with your wrists. So taking your watch off and, and moving your wrists can, uh, can help too. Next up is our hips. Um, this is a little bit, um, the, moving your hips is something that not everybody is, is accustomed to. A lot of people when they try and bend over are gonna bend from the back, from their back. So if you bend your back as you're, as you're bending over, you're much more likely to injure your back or to pull something. Um, what we're going to practice doing is moving, is bending from our hips and hinging here. So what you're going to do is take your thumbs or your fingers and put them kind of right on your belt line where your hips are, or right where your hips are, depending on where you wear your belt. Uh, and you're just going to kind of push your hips back. So you want to keep your shins relatively straight and just kind of push your hips back and hinge down while you keep your back straight. So you're going to bend over and then stand up. Push again, push your hips back, bend over, keep your back straight, and stand up. Do that a few more times. Whether we're standing or we're sitting, our hips are generally in a pretty static position. So just moving them and opening them up like this can really help get us back into gear. So the next thing we're going to do is work on our ankles. So the first ankle exercise, you're going to take one foot and put it behind you. And then just roll your ankle in a circle. Feel free to hold on to a chair or the table if you need to. You just want to rotate your ankle around as you keep your toe on the ground. So you're going to go one direction, just making circles with your ankle, and then the other direction. And the same on the other foot. Other, one foot goes on the ground, the other foot goes back, put your toe down, just rotate the ankle. Okay. The last piece of this exercise uh, is called ankle clearing. So this is more, uh, this is knees, this gets your knees and your ankles. So uh, this one you might, you, you'll definitely, you may have to hold on to something. What you want to do is take one foot and put it heel to toe with the other. Um, so you've got your feet kind of in a straight line, uh, one heel to the other toe. You want to stand up straight, make sure again your back and your shoulders 
uh, your pelvis are all in alignment. And then you want to kind of bend your knees. Um, so as you bend your knees, your knees are going forward and clearing your ankles. So your knee is going in front of your ankle and should go kind of almost up above your toes. So just bend the knees, keep moving those knees forward, and stand up, bend. You can really feel in your Achilles and in your, in your, your quads, um, this should kind of get your, your whole leg moving. It's almost like a little ballet plie. Um, again, just switch the other foot. You want to keep your, your weight balanced between your feet here. Get some cracks in those ankles. Okay. So, anybody have questions about any of those? Did that all feel uh, feel alright? Hmm? Yeah. There's. I mean, these are these are all derived. You know, they're they're all they all come from the same place. Um, whether it's yoga or CrossFit, um, all of all of the exercises are trying to do the same thing. Just keeping your body moving. Keeping, keeping all the blood flowing in the right places. So, a um, couple more couple more exercises. Um, squats are a really good thing that you can do at your desk. Um, all of these I've, I've tried to pull out uh, from this book. I have the book. Uh, we, you're welcome to look at it afterwards. Um, I've tried to pull out a specific exercises that you can do at your desk um, with, with no equipment. Um, there, there's lots more that you can do. Um, Squats, again, are really good, uh, whether you're sitting or standing. If you're standing, you know, um, well, really, whether you're sitting or standing, again, uh, your, your core and your, your hips um, are all kind of not really, um, they're, they're going to be in a static position. So um, doing some squats can help engage all of that and keep you moving. So uh, for a squat, again, um, you can do this uh, on your own, or you can do it with a chair. So. If you're sitting, you clearly have a chair at your desk. If you're standing, you probably have one too. Um, using the chair can be a way to, to assist you with these squats. So um, whether you are using a chair or not, um, the, the, the key to doing a squat um, safely is again, making sure that your back is straight and then you're not bending, that you're using your hips instead of your back to, to go down. So. Um, you want to stand kind of with your feet shoulder width apart. Uh, again, making sure you're engaging your core, keeping everything in alignment. Um, you want to hinge your hips back. Uh, you might want to, yeah, you can make your feet where they're comfortable. You want to hinge your hips back uh, and kind of slowly sink down into, into those hips. And you only go as far as is comfortable for you. You can hold on to the chair or a desk, table. Um, and stay there as long as you want. So, and then you wanna, you wanna stand up. So again, put your feet as wide as is comfortable. You can point them, you can point your feet out a little bit. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, keep your feet wide, point your toes out. You can hold on to the chair, keep your back straight and lower down, kind of sitting into your hips and into your butt as much as you need. Um, you can kind of sit there, you know, even if you can only, only bend down a little ways, um, just holding on and engaging your hips instead of your back is gonna mean uh, you're, you're moving safely and successfully. So just holding on, doing a few squats, standing back up. You should feel as you're doing this, more blood flowing, a little, little, little more awake, a little happier body. Okay, uh, one more exercise for us. This is the overhead stretch. So again, um, you can do this with a desk, table, uh, a chair, anything, anything that you have to support 
your your body. Um, so I'm going to do this here. So um, with this again, you uh, you know we're, we're we're sitting and typing all day. Our hands are just here. We want to make sure we're moving our shoulders and moving our wrists and keeping all of that moving. Um, so. Uh, for the word stretch, you want to place your hands um, on whatever chair or table that you have. Um, you want to kind of push down on that and make sure that you're, you're putting pressure on your hands and not pushing down, but just um, feeling the, the, the pressure uh, and, and turning your, your shoulders out a little bit so they lock in place. You want to lock your, your elbows. Um, but this little bit of external rotation and pressure can help uh, engage your shoulders too. So um, push down uh, and kind of turn your, turn your arms out. And then you're gonna slowly walk your feet back as you keep your back straight. I'm gonna push my chair. Um, so again, bending from the hips, keeping your back straight and your shoulders and your elbows locked and engaged, you're just gonna bend over. Hold it and breathe. And as you breathe, you can feel your core kind of engaging and relaxing. And just that engaging and relaxing can really help to, to uh, engage your, your whole core and your whole body for that stretch. Stand back up. Do it again if you want. Stand back up. Okay. As you do that, you can really kind of push your chest into the ground and feel the stretch all the way through. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Uh, yeah, that is all I have. Um, that was pretty short. Uh, so uh, I want to say thanks to Blue City Strength, uh, my trainer, Jason. Um, he uh, helped me build out a lot of these exercises, and, uh, and he's been a great friend and uh, advisor over the last couple of years. Uh, also, the illustrations came from a book called Deskbound uh, by Kelly Starrett. Uh, he uh, was the founder of San Francisco CrossFit, uh, and he has written a number of books about um, keeping your body uh, in the right place uh, as, as, a, as a desk worker. Um, so Deskbound is his latest. Uh, he also has, um, he's got a couple other books. Uh, I also just found um, in the credits he did a YouTube t or, uh, he did a, a talk at Google uh, that's very similar to this uh, where he outlines a lot of the themes that he he built out into Deskbound. Uh, so this is the YouTube link. Uh, the slides will be up. You can click through that. Uh, but if you just Google Kelly Starrett uh, Google talk, uh, <laughs> you can you can get that, and that's a really great talk. Um, much. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of good stuff there. So, this is me. I'm Avi. Um, I, I do work at Midcamp. Uh, I'm, I'm on the founding uh, group for the Drupal Event Organizers Working Group. Um, and I do Drupal and would love to work with you doing Drupal. Um, I'm uh, freelancing at the moment, so if you need some Drupal work, let me know. Uh, Drupal GitHub, ProBoy, Twitter, uh, my website. And again, I'm not a professional trainer. I'm a Drupaler uh, who has tried for the last couple of years to uh, to to make myself a little bit a little bit better. Um, so with that, thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Anybody? So you like the bare desk? Uh, I did like the bare. Yeah. The question was, do I like the bare desk? Um, uh, the Veradesk is a great solution for a standing desk when you can't buy a full standing desk. Um, it's, there, there's a lot of time when you get dumped in a cube farm and you can't do anything about that, and the Veradesk is a perfect solution for that. It's, it's not 
the best standing desk, but it's the best standing desk yeah. to put on top of something else. I had one, but like cables kept getting caught and stuff. And yeah, um, so. yeah, it, it's it's the best solution for the problem it's solving. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but that's still hard. Any other question? Does anybody do any of this uh, on their own? I mean, I do like some yoga and stuff in the morning, but I really do need to, uh, especially the middle of the afternoon time when you feel like taking a nap, you know, it's good just to get up and move around and yeah. re-energize your body. Yeah, yeah. the comment was, um, it's, good, uh, it's good to get up and move around, especially in the, in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, one of the things I found uh, working at a standing desk um, was that that like three o'clock slump where you just want to take a nap was significantly less uh, pronounced. Um, so I, I would still kind of feel a little bit tired, but when I was sitting down, I would like genuinely be like, oh, I'm just gonna close my eyes now. Uh, whereas at, at a standing desk, it's a lot easier to kind of keep that momentum going and, and stay energized. Um, and again, if you're gonna do any of this stuff, working into it slowly uh, is a good thing. Like I said, I've been standing for four, more than four years. Um, and I, uh, when I'm you know, working a full day, I can, I can stand a full day now. Uh, and I'm still moving and I'm, and I'm moving around, uh, but I definitely didn't start doing that. So if you're, if you're gonna get into this, I recommend uh, starting slow, getting a desk that moves up and down, uh, or getting a tall desk with a like, bar stool uh, type chair and, uh, and being able to sit and stand and alternate throughout the day. Cool. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what I usually follow. Uh, that's part of yoga as well, which you can do anywhere, in a plane, in a toilet, uh, in a conference, anywhere, uh, while driving as well. So you just concentrate on your breath. You inhale, concentrate. You exhale, concentrate. Just do it for five times for, uh, uh, for at least three or four sessions in a day and in, increase the frequency. It, it, it helps to you know stay focused and increase that concentration level. You know, so inhale, completely focus on what you're inhaling. Completely focus on what you're exhaling, that breathing exercise. I mean, since you were doing it, mm -hmm. more than uh, that uh, stomach stuff. So, yeah. So it's like, yeah, from here it's good, but then I do it from here as well. Yeah. I'll, I'll learn this thing. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. The comment for the recording was, uh, was as you're breathing and doing breathing exercises, uh, you can focus on your core, but you can also focus on your on, on your brain. Um, and so, and and keeping your your mental focus as you're breathing um, can be a really good way to, yeah, to to stay to stay focused. Yeah, it helps. It will take some time. You have to be consistent in that. It helps. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Happy end of flyover camp. All right. For those who